Hi, this is Bill for SparkyChannel.com and it's house renovation time. Today I'm going to test out a household lighting switch to see if it's operating properly. Then if I determine that the switch needs to be changed out, I'll show you how to change it out, explain how a switch works, and then test the new switch. This video is for educational purposes only and only competent persons should attempt this repair. Now here's a switch right here. I have the cover plate off. You do have to take the cover plate off. And if you can see where the light is right here, okay, that's one terminal right there. And then down here, I've got my little flashlight on another terminal. See, there's two terminals. We got one up here and one down here. Because this switch is probably from the 70s or 80s, there is no grounding terminal. Because this house was built in 1960, there are only two wires in this box and there is no ground wire. One of the wires is the hot wire, which is always hot and which we call the line wire. The line wire can go to either terminal. The other wire should only be hot when the switch is on and it should not be hot when the switch is off. It's called the load wire and it can also go to either terminal. This is my Fluke 1AC voltage detector and I have it turned on and you want to test it on a known electrical source first like an outlet and make sure it works and you see it blinking that's a good sign that it's working. We'll do this test with the light switch off. So only one of these two terminals should be hot while the light switch is off. Okay, one terminal's hot, the other terminal's hot. Hot, uh-oh. Let's turn it on. Let's see what's going on. It's hot there, and it's hot there. So both of these terminals are hot. This is an interesting case. The fluke tester tests down to 90 volts AC, and is picking up electricity on both terminals while the switch is off. This may be an intermittent problem. For this reason, I'll change out this switch. Other reasons for changing it out are that it's of very low quality and it's very dirty. First, I'm going to turn off the circuit breaker that controls this switch. And this is my ideal circuit, circuit breaker finder kit right here. And this is a special adapter uh, that you screw in to the light and this this is to find the circuit breaker okay so you take this adapter and you plug one of these standard two prong to three prong adapters into it and then i'm going to put this into the light socket you notice there's one green light that means that it's correctly wired but no ground and this is a 1960 house there just isn't any ground in that light circuit there. I'm at the load center and this is my circuit breaker finder receiver. You turn it on like that and you let it chirp and make all the noise it wants. Then you go over all the breakers and let it make various noises and so forth. It's testing for relative strength. And now we're going to go over and there it is right there. Okay. That's the circuit breaker that needed to be turned off right there. We got it turned off. I'm back in the bedroom now and you can see that the transmitter, which had one green light on the floor, uh, now has no light uh, showing that it's off. So we did turn off the correct circuit breaker. And another test is to use your voltage sensor on both of the terminals with the switch on. And we see that the electricity is definitely off. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove this switch. That's one. Then I'm going to, since this has just been painted, there. You, you just cut the paint a little bit with a razor knife and that, that keeps a whole chunk of paint from coming off. So this is the old one right here. This is the push-in type switch so I'm just going to cut off the wires right here and right there and I'm going to strip new ends for the wires 
On the left, you see the switch that I removed. It's residential grade, which is also called general use grade. And if you look at it closely, you can see it was very dirty and broken. The new switch is much larger and more heavy duty. It's called federal specification grade or spec grade as it's stamped on the switch. As a contractor, whenever you're working on a federal job, you must use a minimum of spec grade. I highly recommend that you don't use residential grade in your homes and projects. They may save a few dollars initially, but if they malfunction, break or burn up, they can end up costing you a lot of money. Hospital grade and combination hospital slash spec grade are other excellent grades of devices. And this particular one can be used for either a 15 amp or a 20 amp circuit. So it's a, it's a good choice. It has a, a different attachment system than the one we pulled out. You can actually just uh, put the straight wires in here and tighten down or you can go around the terminal if you prefer. Now I've put wire connectors on both of the wires and I've turned the circuit breaker on. Uh, this is to make a test. The wire connectors are for safety. Okay, so this is my Fluke 1AC. It's ready to go. And this one is not showing hot. This one's showing hot. Not hot. This is the way the test should have gone when I tested the original switch. When I had it off, uh, this one was showing hot. And then when I went to this one, this one shouldn't have shown hot. So, and let me just say, uh, this is a fluke. It goes to 90 volts AC to 1000 volts AC. But the important part for this is the 90. It's not too sensitive. You need a quality tester that's not too sensitive. Okay, for my next test, I've put a piece of red tape back here on the hot wire to designate it as a hot wire. Okay, then I, I put my alligator clip from my Fluke 117 electrician's meter on the hot wire. I'm going to take this black probe, I'm going to put it right, put the backlight on, I'm going to put it back here on the metal, and I'm getting 0, 0.0. So that means that the metal box does not provide a path to ground. It doesn't provide a path back to the load center. So I'm not going to be uh, hooking a grounding pigtail up to this box and using that, which I would do if this was showing a ground. I have turned the circuit breaker off again, and I'll double check to make sure it's off, and it is. So my next step is to color code this white wire. In any home that was built prior to 2011, you may find this situation where you have a black wire and a white wire in a switch box. This doesn't mean you have a hot and a neutral. This is part of a switch loop. This is actually the hot wire, and when the switch is on, it closes the circuit so that this becomes hot, and this is the load wire that goes to the light. So what I've done is I've color-coded this white wire. It's now color-coded to black so that a future person working on this will see this and say, oh, this is actually a black wire. It's part of a switch loop. This is not a neutral. It doesn't matter which wire goes to which terminal. This switch is simply going to close the circuit so that the uh, electricity is flowing from this wire to this wire and to the light. Or it's going to open the circuit when you turn it off so that it's open between these two so that the light is off. So we're just going to go, to go ahead. We're just going to go ahead and put the wire right in there like that. Tighten it down securely and put this wire right in like that. Tighten it down securely. Now, the ground here, we're just going to tighten down. Now we're going to take some black electrician's tape and go around the terminals, including that grounding terminal. Now, 
Now I'll do the same test that I did on the original switch with the switch in the off position. This terminal is hot and this terminal is not hot. I switch it on, it's hot. I switch it off and it's not hot. So this switch is operating properly. When you have an ungrounded switch, it may be necessary by code to install a screwless wall plate. In my case, this switch is controlled by GFCI, so I don't have to put on a screwless wall plate. Here's article 404.9, provisions for general use snap switches. So it's about switches, and it's saying at this point that you need to ground your switches. We're going to go down here to exception number one, where no means exists within the snap switch enclosure for connecting to the equipment grounding conductor or where the wiring method does not include or provide grounding conductor, a snap switch without a connection to an equipment grounding conductor shall be permitted for replacement purposes only. A snap switch wired under the provisions of this exception and located within eight feet vertically or five feet horizontally of ground or exposed grounded metal objects shall be provided with a face plate of non-conducting, non-combustible material with non-metallic attachment screws unless the switch mounting strap or yoke is non-metallic or the circuit is protected by a ground fault circuit interrupter. Okay, what they're basically saying in practical terms is if you have a non-grounded switch and it's not protected by a ground fault circuit interrupter and it's close to anything metallic that might be grounded and that would include cold water pipes or just any kind of grounding, then you have to have a screwless wall plate. Okay, it says you can use plastic screws, but they're no good. They strip out. The screwless wall plates are quite attractive. They're, that's a good solution. You have to screw on the base plate, so it's not really screwless, but you just click this on, and there are no screws anywhere. So if there was a ground fault problem and you didn't have a GFCI protecting the switch, then you would have a plate here with, with no metal screws. So that's for safety. Now it works great. I'll put links in my video description for the Fluke 1AC voltage sensor for the ideal circuit breaker finder set, Leviton screwless wall plates, Fluke 117 electrician's meter for the Kenipex 1000 volt insulated electrical installation pliers and for Leviton spec grade switches. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.